In this section, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations using factoring. This comes from section 6.6. .6. In order to complete this section, you want to understand how to solve how to factor polynomials, as well as understand how to solve linear equations. Solving quadratic equations involves use of something known as the zero product rule. The zero product rule says if you have two things multiplying to equal zero, then either the first one or the second one has to equal zero. This is a special property of zero and does not work with any other numbers. So let's go ahead and look at a base case example that has already been factored for us. Example A, we have 3x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. So what we want to do is set each one of these factors. We have the first thing will either equal 0, or the second thing will equal 0. From here, we want to solve each one of these little linear equations. So let's start with the first one. The first one, in order to solve for x, recall that we want to move our constant term to the other side. So by adding 1, the 1's cancel on the left, and on the right, I'm left with 0 plus 1 is 1. We can then divide both sides by 3. And we are left with x equals 1 third. So that's one solution. Or we have x plus 2 equals 0. In order to get x by itself, I want to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm left with x equals negative 2. So those are going to be two solutions. That's going to be one of the things we'll see in this section is that some equations have more than one solution. So now that we've looked at our base case example, let's talk about solving quadratic equations using factoring in general. In order to solve quadratic equations, the first thing that we want to do is move all terms to one side and write in descending order. When you do this, you should have one side of your equation is equal to zero. Note, you may need to multiply factors together and move terms on more challenging problems. Number two, our second step, we want to factor. And finally, we want to set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay, so let's get into some examples of this. So we have 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. Our first step is we want to factor this. So my first 2x squared, that's going to be 2x and x. My lasts are going to be 1 and 4. I can't go with 2 and 2 because then one of them would have to be with the 2x. And remember, you still cannot have same factors in the same set. So we have to go with 1 and 4. And 4 is going to go in the second set. 1 is going to go in the first. We have different signs. So I'm going to make my 4 positive because I want my larger quantity to be positive and my 1 is negative. Finally, make sure that you remember to have your equals 0. From here, we want to do a quick check. We do get our outsides is 8x. Our insides is minus x. That does subtract to 7. So now, Let's go ahead and set each factor equal to 0 and solve each one of the little equations. <clears throat> In our first little equation, we have 2x minus 1 equals 0. 
So to solve for x, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. We get 2x equals 1. And then divide by 2. We get x equals 1 half. For our second equation, I want to subtract 4 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 4. So my two solutions are 1 half and negative 4. And we're done. Okay, so let's look at some other examples. One thing to note about these examples is note that we do not have equals 0. And in order to solve using factoring, that has to be our first step. It's one, of the, one side of the equation does have to be equal to 0. So the first thing we want to do is move terms, all terms, to one side of the equation. So if we start with example C. Example C, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. Note, technically, it doesn't matter which term you move or which terms you move. Me personally, though, I always like moving the term such that, or I want to make sure my x squared is positive. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Note that we cannot combine our terms because they are not like, so we are just left with 3x squared minus 2x. We have our equals 0 now because on the right side, my x is canceled. And now that we have it equal to 0, we can go ahead and factor out a common factor. That's all we can do since there's just two terms here. And it's not a difference of square. So we can factor out an x. We are left with 3x minus 2 inside equals 0. Now, even though we have that x on the outside, don't get all freaked out about it. All we have here is we're going to set each one of our factors equal to 0. So I have x equals 0 or 3x minus 2 equals 0. Now, x equals 0, we're done because you can't solve for x. It's already done for you. The second one, we can add 2 to both sides. We get 3x on the left, and on the right we have 2. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 2 thirds. So our two solutions are x equals 0 and 2 thirds. Make sure that you do not lose that x equals 0, and make sure that you make sure, or that's a lot of making sure there. Be sure that you do include it in your final solution or that you do something to indicate that you know it is a solution. All right, let's come across to example D. Example D, we have x squared equals 6x minus 9. Now, if you want, you can subtract, six, you can subtract x squared from both sides. That's perfectly fine. But as I said, me personally, I always like moving my terms so that my x squared is positive. So on this one, I'm going to subtract 6x and add 9 to both sides. So they cancel on the right, and on the left, I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus 9. On the right, the only thing I have left is 0. From there, we can go ahead and factor. We have x and x. Things that multiply to 9 are 3 and 3. Those do add to 6. And since it's a positive 9, we know that they have same signs. They are both going to be negative in order to get to negative 6. So we have x minus 3 
times x minus 3 equals 0. Now for this problem, since our factors are exactly the same, we only have to work with one of them. I don't have to solve the same equation twice. So we have x minus 3 equals 0. We add 3 to both sides. We get x equals 3. And so this one only has one solution. For our last example, we have 9x squared equals 16. So again, I want to move everything to one side. I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. And I get 9x squared minus 16 equals 0. Hopefully you're getting pretty good at recognizing this. This is difference of squares. And so my 9x squared factors to 3x and 3x. 16 factors to 4 and 4. And I have different signs. We have that this is equal to 0. And so now I can go ahead and set each one of my factors equal to 0. Do we have to do both of them? Well, for this one, yes, because even though they're very similar, they are not exactly the same. So we do have 3x minus 4 equals 0 and 3x plus 4 equals 0. I can add 4 to both sides. I get 3x equals 4. Divide by 3, we get x equals 4 thirds. For the second one, I can subtract 4. I get 3x equals negative 4. And then if I divide by 3, I get x equals negative 4 thirds. So those are my two solutions. For a final example, note that we have something in factored form equals 6. And we can't have this if we're going to solve using factoring. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and multiply this out before we move the 6 over to the left. So if we multiply this out, we get our first, our x squared. Outsides, we get 3x. Insides, we get minus 2x. Lasts, we get minus 6. Equals the right side, which is 6. We can combine our like terms. So we have x squared plus x minus 6 equals 6. And now we can go ahead and bring the 6 on the right over to the left side. So I'm going to subtract it. So we have x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. We can now factor this. We get x and x. Things that multiply to 12, 4 and 3 will probably work. And I want positive 4, negative 3, because remember that we are multiplying to negative 12. That means different signs. Since we are adding to positive x, we want our larger one to be positive. From here, we can set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we get x plus 4, subtract 4 from both sides. So x equals negative 4. For the second one, we can add 3 to both sides. And we get x equals 3. And we're done. This is the hard problem. And though it may be a little bit longer, 
note that it's just a combination of things that we have talked about in the past.